So we're now going to learn about why when we have a changing magnetic field inside a conducting loop, we get a current induced in that loop. So in order to understand this, let's start by picturing a single conducting wire moving into a region with a magnetic field. So let's picture that magnetic field is coming out of the screen. Now the conducting wire contains electrons which are free to move. So as the conducting wire moves into the region with the magnetic field, there's a magnetic force on the electrons and we can use the right hand rule to work out its direction, remembering that electrons are negative, so the force is out the back of our hand. So as the conducting wire moves into that magnetic field, the electrons feel a force upwards. Now as the electrons move upwards, under the influence of this force, we're going to get lots of negative charges up the top of the wire. So just as we saw when we were looking at the Hall effect, we're going to get an electric field established inside this wire, and that electric field is also going to be up the screen, which is going to be exerting a downwards force on the electron. So at some point, once enough electrons have moved up, we're going to have no net force on the electrons because they'll have the electric force balanced by the magnetic force. However, as they were moving upwards, we would temporarily measure a current flowing in the opposite direction to the flow of electrons. So once our wire is now completely within that magnetic field, we've got the case where we've now got an electric and magnetic force balanced, so the electrons are no longer moving and there is no current. Now as the wire moves out of the field, the magnetic force upon those electrons disappears and temporarily they just feel that electric force because now we've got lots of electrons up the top. So under the influence of that electric force, they're now going to move downwards, which means that we'd have a conventional current flowing upwards. But obviously this is just going to last for a very short time because as the electrons spread out again, that electric field ceases to exist. So let's now imagine well, what would happen if instead of moving just a single wire into this magnetic field, we instead move the loop. Well, as we move that loop into the magnetic field, the electrons in the right hand side of the loop are going to initially feel that magnetic force and so they will move upwards. However, now because it's a loop, they can actually get out of the way. So they can actually keep flowing in this case because we're not establishing an electric field to, counter out, to counteract that magnetic field. Now as the loop continues to move, when it's all within the field, we're going to have a force on the electrons on the left hand side of the loop and the right hand side of the loop, and those are both going to be directed in the same direction. So again, we'll have that electric field which is established, which opposes the motion from the magnetic field. As the loop moves out of that magnetic field, the electrons on the left hand side are still going to feel that upwards force. So as that happens, they can move around the loop and so we'll have a current established in the opposite direction around the loop as that loop moves out of the region with the magnetic field. So let's have a look at a demonstration showing that this actually happens in real life now. So what I have here is a loop of conducting wire connected to an ammeter which can measure current. And here's a horseshoe magnet with a north pole and a south pole. So we've got magnetic field lines going across between here. Now have a look at what happens when I move the wire down through the magnetic field. You can see we get a small deflection of the needle on the ammeter showing us that an electric current was induced. Now if I move it up again, you can see we get a deflection in the opposite direction. So let's have another look at that. 